Hi. I just want to say hello. Um, welcome to Saturday's class. It's so nice to see you here. So, uh, since we're up at 7 a.m. on Saturday, we might as well do some stuff, do some derivatives. So, I'm gonna. Um, I'm gonna do two things. Um, one of the things I'm gonna do is prove the chain rule, which I haven't done in class. And someone should yell at me for not doing that, but um, what's up? Why should I complain that they don't believe the chain rule because I didn't prove it? But anyway, uh, here we are, you're, you're valuable and I'm trying to fix it by not letting you uh, just blindly trust what I'm saying. So the chain rule is, is supposed to tell me the derivative of a composition. So I have a, a function, a composition of functions. I wanna find its derivative. I know what I'm supposed to get. So what is the derivative of this? Really, it's probably the last time I write this limit down, I think. Um, so you divide by h, you take your function, which is g composed with f, and you plug in x plus h, and then you subtract your function where you just plug in x. So uh, you don't change anything because you probably plugged in H to begin with. Um, so this is, well, this is where I'm supposed to start. And somehow I also know what I'm supposed to, and I'm supposed to end here. I'm supposed to get the derivative of the outside evaluated in the inside and times the derivative of the inside. Um, which, I mean, I wish this simplified somehow, but um, I don't see how to do that. Well, I should write out what the composition is. The composition is just the result of plugging in G into F. So, now can't do much else. Um, Definitely, these are not a common factor because that's not a multiplication. Um, and somehow these are even less of a common factor because those are even less of a multiplication. So not much I can do, but if I look at where I'm supposed to end, um, I know what this has to look like. So the derivative of G, at x, that looks like the limit of g of x plus h minus g of x divided by h as h approaches zero. And now here I have the derivative of f, but I plugged in something else that's not x. Um, so, ooh. I'm gonna write that. Um, maybe I won't write it. Maybe I'll try to, to get this. Um, so am I gonna get here from here? Well, there's one thing I can do. Also, you know, maybe I like to write things like this. Uh, and this is suggesting that I multiply and divide by the change in, in g of x. So why not multiply and divide by the change in g of x and see what I get? Because that will give me, um, if I combine this numerator and this denominator, I'm gonna get g prime of x. And then I have to figure out um, what's happening to, 
to the other stuff. Um, so let's start by combining the thing I just said. So I wanna, I know I wanna take this denominator and this numerator. So what I'm gonna be left with because multiplication doesn't care about the order you multiply things. Uh, so this is the, the stuff without a blue circle. This was in the, in the numerator, this is in the denominator and the stuff inside a blue circle is this which looks fantastic because it looks like the derivative of, of G. So that, that looks like half of it. So how could this be? How could it be? Could it be that this is, if I take this limit, it exists and it equals uh, the derivative of F at G? Well, yes, it could. Uh, oh no. The answer is yes. Um, Remember that you can't split the limit of a product into the product of the limits unless you know that both exist. So I know this one exists, but I'm not sure that this one exists. So I gotta be careful. Uh, but anyway, let's try to do it. Let's try to do the second thing that showed up there. The limit as h approach zero. This was what I had in the numerator the original thing, f, f, f plug in g, and then plug in x plus h, plug in x, subtract. And in the denominator, I had the change in g. So this looks like the derivative because um, this pretty much looks like somehow the change in g, and this looks like the change in f as g changes. So maybe all I need to do is just give everything new letters so that it becomes clearer. For example, um, let us just write g of x, let's just call that a. Um, so whenever I see g of x, I'm just gonna replace it by a letter, the letter a, because I think that the trees are not letting me see the forest. So here's a g of x, so I'm gonna replace it by a. Here's uh, another g of x, I'm gonna replace it by a. So um, that looks pretty good. Um, so now the, the h appears here and here, and it always appears inside of g of, inside of g and add it to x. So, uh, I wonder if I can just write g of x plus a g equals, equals b. Um, so the question is, um, I mean, I can do it. Um, definitely. Um, but h disappears and I don't know, um, I don't know if I understand what B is doing. So I can do this, but I don't know how B is changing. So A is not changing. A, there's no H's in the definition of A, but B will change with H. So really the question is, uh, what is happening? To, to this new quantity as, um, as h approaches zero. In other words, what is the limit as h approaches zero of g of x plus h? Um, well, 
I know what the limit of x plus h is um, as h approaches zero. This is approaching x. The question is, can I just take the limit of whatever is inside of g? That question is the same as asking, is g continuous? Um, and is g continuous? Yes. Um, because we're assuming it's differentiable. We assume, um, and remember that if you have a derivative, you're continuous. <clears throat> so this is g of x, which also by the way I'm calling a. So what is b approaching? Turns out that as h approaches zero, b is approaching a, all right, well, I'm writing here, I guess. And now, if you if I just stare at this formula, that formula is just literally on the nose of the definition of the derivative. Uh, it's the change in f divided by the change in x as the change in x approaches zero. This is um I bet that's an email from the university telling me to come on Saturday, which I will do for sure. Um, <clears throat> this is this is just the definition of the derivative. This is this is the thing we call derivative. And if I don't want to call it a, because after all, I I just I came up with this letter myself. I can call it g of x. So. That limit is the derivative of the outside when I plug in the inside, um, which is just exactly. So I guess I guess this limit exists uh, if f prime has to exist at g of x, um, and that's all we need. That's the that's the chain rule. Um, this limit also exists. This is f prime of g of x. We just did it. So now that I know that both limits exist, oh. Oh, it's frozen. Oh, my. Um, how do I unfreeze it? Oh, it doesn't really unfreeze. Oh, maybe, maybe. Maybe. Uh, right. Um, so this, um, so we have the limit of a product. Now that is going to be the product of the limits if I know that, that they both exist. And I do know they both exist now. This is g prime of x, which is what it is. And I'm saying, well, um, g has to be differentiable. Otherwise, what am I doing? So that will make this limit exist. And this limit, I did it in the next page. It's the derivative of the outside after plugging in the inside. And that's going to exist if, if f is differentiable at what I was calling a, which is g of x. And if that works, uh, then both limits exist. And what I get is the product of the limits, which is the thing that shows up in the chain rule. Life is good. All right, well, um, now, now I've proven every differentiation rule that I've promised, except for, no, except for except for the power rule. Ooh, the power rule. Um, so I more or less proved the power rule for um, for what you call when the exponent is a whole number. When the exponent is 
really a natural number. Um, so let, I mean, think about what happens for a negative number. Um, and I promise that it works for any real number in the exponents as long as the base x is positive. Um, but I haven't really proved that, but now I'm gonna prove it. Uh, using what we learned on Thursday, which is that you take your function and you call it y. So if n is any real number and x is positive, because otherwise I can't, if x is negative, this only works if n is a whole number. If x is negative, you can't take negative one to the one half. So what I'm gonna do is logarithmic differentiation, which I learned on Thursday. Logarithmic differentiation amounts to taking logarithms of both sides and then doing implicit differentiation. So if I take logarithms on both sides, what I get is that the logarithm of y is the logarithm of x to the n. And why do I do that? I do that because the logarithm takes an, expo an exponential and an exponent and makes it show up out in front multiplying. Uh, so what I have is that these two logarithms, um, well, one is a multiple of the other. They're no longer related by a power. So that's step one of logarithmic differentiation. Step two is take derivatives. So if I take derivatives, um, well, let me just write derivative on both sides. So let's just do it separately. So on the left side, I have the derivative of the logarithm of y respect to something that is not y, which means that I have to do the, the chain rule. If I don't do the chain rule, this is my one opportunity to mess the whole problem up. The chain rule says um, you're gonna stick in the middle that letter that is not x. And now I'm taking the derivative of the logarithm of y respect to y. That's just the derivative of the logarithm, which I know by heart it's one over y and then dy dx is the thing I, I don't know. And that's, the, that's how the left side simplifies. The right side simplifies in this way. Well, there's no y's anymore. So I don't have to fear the chain rule. I have to fear uh, freaking screen freezing. Right. Um, so what I have here is a number that's multiplying some function. And a number that's multiplying a function just comes out of the derivative. So what I have is n times the derivative of the logarithm, which again is something I've just memorized. So if the left side equals the right side, that, that means that one over y times the derivative I'm trying to find equals n divided by x. And finally, so step one, take the logarithm, step two, take the derivative, step three, solve for the derivative you wanna know. Um, it's already by itself on, on the left side. So all I gotta do is get rid of one over y dividing or multiplying by one over by y. So dy dx is ny over x. And that is the power rule that you know and love. Um, because um, what is y? y is x to the n. So this is nx to the n over x, which is the same as nx to the n minus one, because when you divide an exponential to the same base, the exponents subtract. So now you can't 
uh, say that I didn't improve the, the power rule for every number. All right, uh, I'm gonna put it up and then do an example of implicit differentiation. See you later, subscribe.